At the start of the 20th century, the military discovered the potential of a new type of vehicle, the aircraft. Only a few years after their arrival, warplanes became an integral part of modern warfare, with countless talented engineers all around the world eager to make the most out of the nascent industry and lucrative government contracts. Soon, most European powers had their own air wings, and Italy was not an exception. Throughout both world wars, Italian pilots used Italian planes, developed and produced by several companies. Today, we're going to talk about one of them, the legendary Fiat Aviazione. The story of this aircraft manufacturer, which was a part of the Turin company known primarily for their automobiles, began in 1908 when Italian engineers created a new piston engine derived from racing cars. For a few years after that, Fiat was mostly busy developing engines, but in 1923, a team led by Celestino Rosatelli designed the CR-1. This biplane fighter aircraft of wood and fabric construction wasn't really special in its own right, but it became a progenitor for a big family of successor planes. The most famous of them was probably the iconic CR-32. Pilots loved it for its excellent performance and handling, and eventually it was purchased by other countries as well. The list of its operators included Austria, Venezuela and Spain. There are several variants of this aircraft available in War Thunder. The standard production model, the BIS, with additional guns, and also the late Kether. It's worth noting that the Kether variant was used to develop one of the best military biplanes of its time, the CR-42 Falco. The new aircraft had excellent flying characteristics, but by the time it was introduced, the biplane configuration itself was quickly becoming obsolete. While Italian pilots were testing the Falco, Germans were already testing the Messerschmitt Bf 109, and the British were developing the Spitfire, and that's just naming a few. Nevertheless, there are several variants of this excellent biplane in the game. The standard Italian model, the Swedish J-11, and the night fighter variant belonging to Luciano Marcolin, CO of 377A Squadriglia Autonoma. Of course, Italians were well aware that monoplane fighter designs were the future, so soon they went all in on them. Fiat engineers led by Giuseppe Gabrielli started working on their own monoplane aircraft designs in the early 1930s. The first plane they produced was the G-50 Freccia. Unfortunately, it had an issue with a limited power output of its engine, which was simply not as powerful as engines of its rivals. As a result, the first Fiat monoplane had a tough time competing with the likes of the BF-109. For the longest time, the team behind the project clung to the hope that they could still come on top by introducing gradual improvements to the key components of the design. But in the end, most of those problems were only solved with the introduction of a brand new fighter, the spectacular G-55 Centauro. This low-wing monoplane equipped with the German Daimler-Benz 605 engine, as well as a powerful MG-151 cannons, it could easily compete with the most advanced fighters of the time. Eventually, the G-55 was used as a basis for developing an even better aircraft, the G-56, but it was never produced in large numbers. The thing was that the northern part of the country, where the company was based, fell under German control. The Luftwaffe were somewhat interested in Fiat vehicles, but not enough to warrant their full-scale production. It's worth saying that the Turin company wasn't all about fighters. They made other types of military aircraft as well. For instance, 
Fiat had the FC-20 ground attack aircraft developed by Kansa, one of the subsidiary companies. Unfortunately, not many of those were made either, and they didn't have much of an impact during the war. The BR-20 Chicona, a speedy medium bomber that was also made by Fiat, had a more eventful career. Even though by the early 1940s, the design was already somewhat obsolete, the bomber was actually used in the Battle of Britain and in the Balkans. After the war, Fiat kept on developing new aircraft, this time for the Italian Republic and the countries of the North Atlantic Alliance. Among other things, the company acquired a license to produce the American F-86K Sabre and the F-104S Starfighter. Furthermore, their engineers, led by the legendary Giuseppe Gabrielli, designed several jets, including the G-91, an impressive light fighter bomber. The experience accumulated while producing the F-86K allowed the team at Fiat to create a reliable aircraft that was pretty cheap to produce and easy to maintain. It's small wonder that the G-91 was picked up as the winning design of the NATO competition for a lightweight tactical strike fighter. During the middle of the 1960s, Fiat Aviazioni merged with AFR to create Air Italia, which is now a part of Leonardo SPA. And even though Fiat doesn't make aircraft anymore, you can still fly their old designs in War Thunder. What is your opinion on their combat capabilities? Come on guys, tell us please in the comments below, we're itching to know.